Bitcoin is close to becoming worthless. Now what's the Bitcoin? Bitcoin's like rat poison. Yeah. Oh. The greatest scam in history. Let's get it. Bitcoin will go to fucking zero. <laughs> yeah. All right, you ungovernable misfits. I'm your host, Max. Everybody knows that Bitcoin is useless, worthless, and doomed to fail. But what if everyone's wrong? What if it's the system that is doomed to fail? Join me as I speak to some of the brightest people in the space and slither to the deepest, darkest depths of the Bitcoin rabbit hole. Today's episode is with Zelko, the co-founder of Ronan Dojo. Ronan Dojo is my favorite Bitcoin node implementation, and it's my favorite for a reason. Ronan Dojo has been built with a focus on privacy and security. No fluff, no bullshit, no pointless features, no hype, just a really fucking well-built, stable, private, and secure node. And at the end of the day, that's why I'm here. I think for most of you people listening, that's why you're here as well. But maybe it's not. Maybe you're new to the show. Maybe you're still here just for the Bitcoin price. Maybe you're still getting excited by the newest, shiniest features that are shilled on all the other platforms. And if you are, that's all right. Hopefully this conversation will help make you think Maybe it might change your perspective on things. And you will also be welcome to join us on the 15th at 20 hundred, eight o'clock London time to continue the discussion. So if you have any questions at the end of this show, if you have any suggestions or you just want to jump on and have a conversation, we'd love to hear from you. If after listening to this episode, you think, fuck, you know what? I do want one of these things. I want to go and buy one of these Tantos. I want to help support this team as well as getting the nicest hardware out there. We don't really cover it too much in this episode, but these things are beautifully built. They are milled out of a solid piece of aluminium. It's anodized. Everything about this is quality. It feels heavy. It's well built and it takes all the stress out of building one yourself. There's no fans, it's passively cooled. I have one sat right next to me now, can you hear it? No, didn't think so. It's fucking incredible, and if anyone has any questions, they can reach out to me. If you fancy a discount, and let's face it, who doesn't, you can use the code UNGOVERNABLE at checkout, or you can use the link that's in the show notes and that will take you straight to it. It helps support this show and it also gives you a discount. I'd like to thank everyone who joined us for the last spaces. It was really good to hear from you all. I really enjoyed that and I'm looking forward to the next one. I want to thank everyone who's reached out and who's been sharing the last episodes with friends and family. And I want to thank my sponsors. I want to thank sx6.store for making incredible seed plates for such good value. If you are going to store your seed, I suggest you do it with steel. If you do it with steel and you want the best value out there, you can buy these for £16.99. They're marine grade steel, so they will survive most fires, floods and pretty much anything you can throw at these things. Check them out at sx6.store. And finally, I'd like to thank Foundation Devices. They make my favorite hardware and they've been supporting this show for a few years now. Not everyone listening to this will want to use hardware. And as we discussed on the last episode and spaces, 
you're pretty good if you're running graphene on a dedicated pixel, especially if you're running this offline and using Sentinel, but not everyone wants to do that and not everyone wants all their eggs in one basket. So if you're like me and you don't want all your eggs in one basket and you want something open source and you want something easy to use, then I really strongly suggest Foundation Devices. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me or Bitcoin Q&A and you can go to foundationdevices.com. Use the code UNGOVERNABLE to get three months VPN with IVPN. I really hope you enjoy the show. As I said, if anyone has any questions, please do join us on the 15th at eight o'clock London time. It would be great to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with friends and family. Every time you share it, it helps support the show. It brings more people in and hopefully gets them using Bitcoin. Here he is. Here I am. Max, how are you? I am fucking brilliant, mate. How are you? I'm doing good. You know, no complaints. I don't know why it always takes you longer than anyone else in the green room. I don't know, it likes me. You're running some sort of clever setup. I fucking wish I was that smart. Good to have you back on the show. Thanks, man. If it is cool with you, we can do a little bit of a back to basics. I have a lot of people reaching out to me and asking questions on the Tanto and why should I run a node and why this one specifically and should I have one that's a miner as well and blah, blah, blah. And as I said to you off air, I've been saying to people, listen, don't overcomplicate it. Have one thing that works. It does its job and it does it perfectly. But not everyone wants to listen to me because I'm the village idiot. That's why we have you to explain and say why you guys at Ronin Dojo do what you do and why you do it the way you do it. Yeah, no, let's, um, let's break into it. I think it's best to probably start with like why running a, a Bitcoin node is important. And, and I mm-hmm. clarify that because not all of the projects that people just say, you know, like, oh, I'm running a node. They don't even call themselves Bitcoin nodes. They, they call themselves sovereign like servers or self-hosted mm-hmm. servers. So it's important to really like understand what it means to be running a node. And to kind of start, you know, running a node, at least like as you get those like introduction videos into Bitcoin and how the network works, Bitcoin relies on uh, that peer-to-peer aspect of the actual network is peer-to-peer as well, right? Not just like peer-to-peer buying stuff and cutting out middlemen, but also the network being decentralized and being a peer-to-peer network in that aspect. So Bitcoin nodes are what help to push and validate transactions on you know whoever's using it, but it, it helps to keep the blockchain in sync, right? So it's important for the aspect of you know when you really start to think about how do you use a Bitcoin node for yourself? I just know like when I first started, I was like, oh, like if I do it, I'm going to be helping the network. And so, you know, you run Bitcoin (laughs) Core and then you think that you're doing something, but you really have no idea. And then you realize as you kind of get some more time in it, that I just really need this. It's actually better for myself if I can actually connect this to my wallets. So running a node in that aspect is extremely important because you're not going to be relying on any other Bitcoin node to go through the blockchain and determine what your balance is. Because really the whole purpose of the node is validating if the address is, it goes through the whole blockchain to see, has this been used? Has it not been used, right? So it's a public ledger. So it can go through and determine like, have these addresses been used? Is there still funds in them, et cetera? So what I try to tell people is that if it's not your node, if you aren't running a node at home, you're using someone else's node. They might say that they connect randomly to a, Electrum's public server somewhere, and it's a one-time thing, but you don't know who that who that person is. And it's known that that there are tons and tons of uh, spun up Electrum servers and Bitcoin nodes out there that are literally doing it just to be able to collect data on different wallets. So um, it's important that you understand that there's a risk out there if you're not running a node. It's a risk. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily an everyone's threat model, but mm. knowing, I think it's personally better if you know, running your node is the best case, but otherwise it's better to at least know your th- like know whose node that you're connected to. I never liked the term 
first class citizen or second class citizen you know that was banded around i think by that fucking trace mayor guy they always annoyed me a little bit i was like i don't like that like it, it feels a bit snobby but it kind of also makes sense it's like as someone who runs a node you have got more ability to keep yourself secure and private than somebody who's relying on someone else when you understand that and you get into bitcoin you think well I want to trust myself and only myself and have full control of everything that I do with my finances. If you really want to actually take that seriously, this is the only way to do it. That's kind of what the realization I came to. And maybe a lot of people don't understand that fully in terms of like, um, you know, they go and buy some hardware and they'll link to the node. Like my, my first interactions was Ledger and linking to their node. And I just didn't really... I just didn't really get it. I was like, yeah, but it's the blockchain. That's like, I just didn't know what I was talking about. I was like, it's the blockchain. And so like, this is Bitcoin. And so it's private and it's this and it's, you know, I had all these assumptions that were totally wrong. And exactly what you said, it's like, I wasn't running VPNs. So now they have my IP. They have every transaction that I've sent. They know the amount of Bitcoin that I have. They know who I'm sending it to. And you have to assume they are tracking this stuff. And so that's a problem. Like that is a serious issue. And so the only way to do it properly and have control of over these things and to not be logged and not be spied on or have less risk is to run your own node. Absolutely. I mean, um, I, I try to tell people, you know, like um, Bitcoin is about being your own bank. The fiat bank is the one that decides whether you you know, they approve transactions, whether you can send money to this person or that person. They know the actual balances that's in your in your bank account. They have all of that information that you might not get to see, right? But that's what Bitcoin's supposed to be about, where you get to decide what you send like how much you send to someone and when you send it and what transactions you wanna pay for and what you wanna approve and that's what it's about, right? So running your node really, really does make you become your own bank and that that's the point you know be your own bank don't trust third parties like that that's what this is supposed to be about is cutting out third mm -hmm. parties and doing this yourself as far as like the first class citizen thing i don't like that either because it kind of it is snobby it's 100 percent snobby yes, and, it, and it i get like the intent of if you've been in bitcoin long enough you should be running your own node like if you've been in long enough that means you've probably accumulated enough that you should care you know, who and what possibly knows how much that you have. And again, people need to really understand that that risk factor of like, if you're not running your node, someone else's node has it. And they're the ones that have your XPUB. They're the one. And when you have an extended public key in the back end, they see everything past, present, future. And that's for the entirety of the wallet. That's not like, you know, a hundred plus addresses. That's every address that that could ever make, uh, which is I don't even know the actual amount. So it's really important for people to to grasp that, that if you want to take your data seriously and you want to start taking those steps, the, the first step in Bitcoin is running your own node. You really need to run your own node and start to connect it to the wallets that you use, whatever wallet that is, and get it right and start doing all the right stuff. That's why I felt like it was so important when I first started. I realized how important it is to do this, especially in the, in the Samurai group is when I really got into it because the people that, and I was just like a nobody just hanging around and with Whirlpool starting to come out, everyone was like, it's really important to run your own dojo before, you know, before you start mixing or you'll have to repair like make a new wallet and do all this other stuff. Hmm. And, and I didn't really understand until I started to dive into it. And that's how I know whenever people tell me, try to argue about the, you know, what Samurai's recommended about, you know, using their server, using a dojo. It's like since day one of doing, uh, of all this stuff, all the cool privacy tools was run your own node, you know, running mm -hmm. your own node was what was always the standard. So if you care about your data, you care about all that stuff, run your own node. And then if you can't afford your own node, you can't build it, anything like that. You don't have the funds maybe necessarily right now. That's okay. Right. Like just, I would recommend at least knowing who's running the node. Most wallets don't tell you who does that. And then you have to determine if you trust that source. Do you trust Samurai server? Do you trust 
Trezor? Do you trust Ledger? If you trust it and if you trust it enough, then yeah, like that's that's a trade off that you can make until you've you've come to that point where you're like, okay, I'm gonna run my own node now. But it's trust that's the key. You are trusting, and no matter how much you care about a project or like the people who are involved, you are trusting. And this whole thing is like, don't trust, verify. And the only way you can not trust and verify is to run your own node. Mm -hmm. Maybe people haven't listened to our first or early conversations, but I remember reaching out to you early days because I'd heard you, I think it was, maybe it was either Odell or Levera you were on. Mm -hmm. And I remember listening. I remember what I was doing. I was mowing a lawn. I remember listening and being like, oh, hang on a minute. This guy isn't a developer. He's got so into this stuff that he has taught himself command line and he started building a node implementation. And I remember it like blowing my mind because I was like, this is a guy who's not fucking involved in this stuff. He's like, he's not a developer. That's that's weird. Like, how the fuck are you doing this? And I remember it like giving me quite a big kick up the ass because I was like, okay, maybe I'm not going to take it to the extreme that this guy is, but. I'm going to do everything that I can to the best of my ability. And I'm not going to allow myself to be like, oh, well, I'm not a dev, so I can't do this. And it was like one of the biggest kick up the asses that I ever had. And that's why I reached out to you that first time. I was like, mate, you know, we need to have this conversation. And then to see where this has gone since then, A, is impressive, but B, like shows people you're not just a nerdy dev who's done this all your life. You're someone who's taught yourself. And it is possible. And if you can do that and you can develop and create this project, then anyone listening to this, you can run a fucking node. You can just run the node that's been built. It's not that hard. I do it. Many people who are not that technical do it. It's really not that difficult. And sometimes it can be like a little bit intimidating, but especially if you're running a Tanto, if something's already pre-built and with the UI, we'll get onto the UI stuff surely but like it's not that fucking hard and most of the people who are like questioning me about it and going oh do i really need to run one like i don't know that i need to they'll say that and then like the next week they'll go oh i'm just dropping another couple of thousand dollars on bitcoin like oh you know i can see it pumping i'm going to throw some more money at it i'm like hang on a minute don't throw thousands of dollars at bitcoin and buying you know stacking sats and you're still not running a node, like, and then complaining that, oh, it's a few hundred dollars to buy one of these things. Like, it's fucking the first thing you should do. It's funny that you mentioned the, the like, that start, the, the starting point and kind of what, like, inspired you to do it, to do the podcast and everything else. But it was, like, just today, actually, someone reached out to me and asked, how did I get started? Right, like, they knew that I was self-started and I kind of taught myself, but they were just like, you know, they wanted to kind of follow those steps. And anytime I see someone do that, it's honestly really cool because that's part of the story that I love is that our story is one of, you know, regular people. Because so often in the space, you know, there are people who have been developing in the, you know, in the outside world, I guess. And then they decide to come into Bitcoin, right? So they, they were software developer for however long, and then they came in afterwards. And not that that's bad. That's honestly how software gets developed a lot faster um, <laughs> and doesn't have as many hiccups. But it's uh, it's been such an amazing ride because of that. Like I, I loved it a lot. And that's kind of why I wanted to stick with it for so long. So I was like, despite how hard it was sometimes, I was determined to make sure that I could be a story that people could point to and say like, wait, I can do that too. Because like I know like a lot of times on our podcast, like I'll say like, oh, I'm a knuckle dragger or whatever. And people probably roll their eyes and think that I'm joking that I'm, you know, I'm calling myself dumb but when it comes to like overly technical stuff. Like I've gotten significantly better in the past year, but I'm definitely no expert. And I'm definitely a person who came from an outside, like zero, zero tech stuff. Like nothing I do outside of Bitcoin is anything to do with tech. So, you know, people can look at it and be like, look, like, if you're determined enough, if you really want to do something, just go after it. Go after it, ask questions, and don't quit. Because the amount of times that I could have quit in the beginning, like just trying to just trying to run it a node, yeah. <laughs> just trying to run Dojo when it first came out, and I, I like could have quit so many times. 
So sometimes I feel bad for users now and like they have a couple of issues and whatever, but then I go back and I think about my time. <laughs> it was a different world. Because even Dojo was new. So I, I just like, just go in and like, keep trying, keep asking questions. If someone gives you a command, don't just like take that and then just forget about it. Like if you mm. want to learn how to program, you need to understand what the commands are and what the different things do so that you can start to understand what's going on. But ultimately, yeah, there really is not an excuse as far as skill gap goes. Like the stuff that everyone has nowadays is honestly remarkable how far the space has come for whether it's uh, node implementations or the self-hosted server stuff. It's come so far since when I started. I think the only real option we had back then was, uh, was Nodal. And so like, yeah, the whole aim is to make it easier for everybody. But uh, what I try to tell people when I'm troubleshooting with them, I'm like, hey, this might not feel fun right now, but like, keep this stuff in mind, like learn these commands so that when you come back and the next time you have an issue, the next time, whatever, I'm like, you're learning how to be sovereign in that aspect of like, I know how to fix this. That's kind of like the beauty of it. I'm really proud of how far that our project has come and being able to cut on a kind of like cut out all that. The backend stuff is almost entirely, I think after the next update, like it should be a rare, rare occurrence for people to even need to go into the backend at all. Everything that they need to be able to do is going to be in the front end. It's a different fucking world. <laughs> Honestly, like when I listened to that podcast, that was like early, early days. And I remember thinking like, if this guy can fucking try and build this project and do all this stuff then i can at least try and run a node and like that was the push and the difference between what i was trying to do then and what i'm doing now is fucking night and day and if it wasn't for listening to you on that podcast the times when i'm trying to build nodes and fucking around with raspberry pies and late into the night you know like oh i've got work in a few hours and i'm still fucking working on this and it's crashing and it's not working and the support wasn't as good as it is now and nothing was as good as it is now and i'm trying to fuck around in command line and and i would just think well okay again like this guy can do it i can at least run a node and the difference now is like you can fucking set one of these things up. i did it the other day i said it in a podcast i set up my tanto at about midnight after having a few drinks i came home went ah fuck it i'll just set it up now i did what i needed to do half an hour had a drink morning i came down everything was working and i was like oh that's it like that's it there's nothing there's there's no more problems no <laughs> it's been um it's been it's been a journey like i i, I really do <laughs> uh like like i feel and that's why sometimes like i'll i don't normally do support but like uh I occasionally jump in and, and help people because I can mm. see the the frustration. Because you've been there. Yeah. Not, not everyone's built for the like, I'm going to like sit down and get this done. A lot of people, especially like, and I, and I get it on their side too, and like to an extent of being like, I paid a lot of money for this and I'm having issues. Totally get it. So that's why, that's why I, I understand people want something. And if there's a hiccup and then, you know, they want to get it fixed. Hey, I, I get that, but um, that like grit to like grind through your problems is a uh, an amazing character trait that I think more people need to have. So hopefully that helps. But yeah, we're we're trying to get rid of any of those issues, and and I'm excited for for what we have coming up. But yeah, really, people should not be intimidated. They should go for it. I think we just put, pushed out the announcement. You know, like the Tontos with the one terabyte. Our prices decrease now. You know, you can even get it pre-synced if you, if you don't want to have to wait. Um, again, it comes to the level of trust mm -hmm. from us, or you can get the two terabyte. But the whole goal is to, um, to get you guys the the products that will help you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean we're, we're not trying to price gouge or anything like that. So yeah, I'm really excited for for everybody. They have a really good opportunity to, to start to dive in and just know as far as the price goes. Like when people are like, oh, it's a lot of money. Understand that like. What we're doing is, is definitely different than a lot of these other companies. Uh, not many of them are self-funded. A couple of them are, but most of them have VC backing. They have their money. They're just basically trying mm -hmm. to pay off their loan. And not that that's, a, I guess, a bad thing. It's not what I would, it's obviously not what I did. You know, buying a Tonto is, is a, giving the support to the, to the FOSS team, you know, to the community. I don't even see it like that. I understand that view of like, if you're looking at this space and you're going, 
right? Who is doing things the way that I want them to do it? Who do I have respect for? Okay, this team are fucking not pulling any punches. They're doing things the right way and they're keeping their users secure and private. Mm -hmm. That's fucking amazing. And if, if you think, okay, well, I want to support them, that's great. And you should. But outside of that, like genuinely, I'm not just saying this because we're friends. What mm -hmm. you've built is fucking brilliant. The user interface is brilliant. The quality of the actual design and the feel and everything. And you don't see that in Bitcoin. And I don't mean to slag it off because I love a lot of the companies that are out there. And I respect anyone who builds anything and tries anything mm -hmm. and puts their work and heart and soul into it. But it's a cut above. It's really fucking good. I don't think people should look at it as like, I'm buying this thing because I want to support. No, no, no. Buy the thing because it's the best thing out there. And it really is. And then you've got the added benefit of like, it also supports a team who are doing things properly. I don't think people until they have it in their hands and they have that setup experience, especially if you've set these things up on Raspberry Pis and fucked around all night for many days and, and had them crashing and everything else. I would pay yep. it 10 times over to just plug it in. I see that little red light go, log in, and it's done. Like yep. that is compared to four years ago, yeah, we're light years ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, f for sure. And I, I appreciate all that, man. Um, I know you meant it for the whole team, but I'm going to reemphasize that because honestly, the team, it's, a, it's all the team's effort, man. We've been really, really fortunate to have an amazing group of guys come together with the same value set, the same work ethic. And, you know, I don't think people really understand. <laughs> we have two guys, well, really one guy, one guy full time on Ronin, and then uh, one guy who's part time on Ronin and part time on another project. So both the developers are <laughs> technically split time. And then I'm still part time or I still at least have a second job. So. And just to clarify, it means that like our guys are pretty much working, like working on something in either job or whatever, almost all the time. Like it's, mm. it's work and sleep and we do this shit cause we love it. You know, we do this shit because even when we're tired, even when we have other things that we could probably do or whatever, you know, we're putting that yeah. sacrifice in because we really give a shit about what we're doing. We really want people to have the best experience. We really want people to take that leap into, you know, the sovereign Bitcoin world. And so without my team, you know, obviously I can't do all this shit myself. You know, Pavel did an amazing job on the UI. Dam has been crushing it on the back end. And what we have coming up is even better. And so I just want to give them a shout out because really without the team, none of this is where it's at. So yeah, four years, four years, a lot has happened, but without the community coming together and contributing to a false project, and I am able to pay them, but it's it's not what they what they deserve. Unfortunately, it's less than what they should be making, what I think they should be making. But we're all okay with that. Like we all know that we're working for well under budget, uh, well under what we should make. I and mean, if we had VC funding, we'd probably double or triple <laughs> what we're getting paid. But it's a sacrifice that we make because privacy fucking matters. And if we're in it for money and we're in it for greed, go and do something else. We're no better than anybody else. Well, you can go and do a million other jobs in this world mm -hmm. and go and make much more money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> much easier, much less stress, much less of a target on your back, all the rest of it. I think that shines through. Not I think it shines through. It does shine through. Like I've met most of your team. I've spoken to most of your team. Mm -hmm. I've seen this project grow over the last four years. And you can tell this is a labor of love. and. It will come. Yeah, you could go and get VC backing and you could go and do the shilling and you could have all a million other features and blah, blah, blah. And you could do all that and you might grow quicker, but it's not the same project. It's not the same product. It's not for the same group of people. And that group of people right now is a little bit smaller. But over time, I genuinely believe that people will go, hang on a minute. Why am I running a node? Mm -hmm. the reasons that we've just talked about okay and if it's the reasons that we've just talked about then what's the best one out there and why 
do I really need my node to store dick pics or whatever <laughs> fucking stupid shit, you know, 10,000 apps? No, not really. What do I need from it? Well, I want it to be stable. I want it to be well built. I want it to connect over Tor. I want it to have a nice user interface. I want it to be easy to set up. Okay, what more do I want other than that? Not much. That's really the most important stuff. And so what does it well? Well, this does it fucking well. That's kind of what I'm trying to get over to people is like, I've run, I think I've run most node packages now. Mm -hmm. And this is the one I've settled on. And especially now we can get into now this update. <laughs> Did it drop today or was it yesterday? Uh, yesterday. Uh, and I just want to, before we jump into it, I just want to add, because I'm sure people have this question, you know, like, well, what about those other ones? Why, why not use those? Just something to consider, right? Like, I guess when you are thinking about what you want out of your Bitcoin node, right? Like you want it to work and you want it to be secure, right? And this, it's like a known thing that most of these guys have at least acknowledged. The more apps and the more like sovereign hosting more stuff and whatever surface. it is that you add, the larger the attack surface, right? And the the more ports that get opened and everything else. It's not that it's necessarily bad in the case, in the use case of a sovereign server, but when you're trying to talk about securing your Bitcoin, like you want your Bitcoin stuff to be Bitcoin stuff. It, that's at least my philosophy because I do have, like host my own my own data and I do all the same things, but mm -hmm. it's separate from my node because I want yeah. that to be different. So that's just something for people to keep in mind but yeah we can we can talk about the update yeah just to uh tie a bow in that it's not a bad thing to do all of the things that some of these other packages can do in fact it's a great thing to do your own storage and hosting and everything else it's brilliant and no one should ever be deterred from doing that but exactly what you said it's like if you're taking this thing seriously if you really are trying to move yourself out of the fiat world and you're trying to move yourself into this bitcoin world the most important thing is your privacy and security so if you have to be running two things separately i really don't think that is much for a problem especially when you understand how much more attackable you are if you start to like we said, like I was taking the piss when I said dick pics, but like seriously, some of the things that these have on, it's like, it's your password manager, it's your photo storage, it's your node, uh, you know, it's, it's like 20 different things. And really, you should be doing that as just two separate things. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has any questions on it can reach out to me and we can, you know, we can go through it. But that is what I've settled on personally. And don't overcomplicate things, I think really is just like, Keep it simple, find something that does the job really well, and that's what this does. No, for sure. So the update. I said it on a tweet today, Pavel is one of the worst blokes I've ever met in my life. <laughs> We've not met in person yet, but he's such a shit bloke. But he <laughs> has done a fucking beautiful job on this. I updated it this morning. Rabbit reached out to me and said, oh, have you seen this new thing? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll check it out. I'm speaking to Zelko tomorrow, but I'll do it before then. He said, honestly, it's really good. Like you should do it. So I set my alarm five o'clock this morning, came down, made a coffee. I thought this is a little bit of peace and quiet and I'm going to sit and I'm going to set this up. And he's knocked it out of the park with this. It is the one thing in this whole Samurai Ronan Dojo stack, which I've been pretty open about that I thought was quite shit is this GUI. Every time I had to use it, I'd be like, oh, everything else is so nice. Every time I use Ronin Dojo, it's so slick and Samurai Wallet's so slick. I keep having to sign into this fucking GUI <laughs> and it just feels like a completely, it feels like that's like three years ago and then everything else is in the future. And every time I used it, I was like, oh, this just doesn't fit quite right. And so what did you drop yesterday and how does this change my life? Yeah, uh, well, we released yesterday the 2.4.0 UI, which has been a, an amazing update. So it took the Samurai Whirlpool GUI desktop app that has been around since the beginning, since Whirlpool came out. And yeah, we took that and integrated it into the UI. So you can now pair your wallet, which that was probably one of the biggest headaches. Pair your wallet with, your, uh, with Ronin. Mm -hmm 
which is the cool part with that is that you can even do it straight on your phone. You can open up your Samurai wallet, get the pairing code, and then open up Tor browser, whatever, and then you just sign in and paste the pairing payload in there. And now you've paired your Samurai wallet that's backed by your node mm-hmm. straight on your phone. And then it takes all of four seconds. So that part's pretty amazing. That was my favorite part so far. Um, so yeah, now you get to visualize. You can see all your mixes. You can see what's queued up. If there's any issues or anything that you see, you know, you can always let us know or reach out to Samurai Samurai Chat. Like I'm looking at one on mine right now. I had an input rejected, um, <laughs> which which happens sometimes just with Tor and, and some other stuff. But it's awesome because I can I can actually control everything. And then what we recommend is people to and this is most this is twofold. It's not we don't have it in here to be able to. Uh, initiate a tx0 so you should do that via if you just want to get rid of the desktop app use the mobile wallet to do your tx zeros one it's a better interface for it anyways because you can select different addresses to be the input you know you have a little bit more control over everything so i've always found it to be a better experience on the mobile app but yeah you can you can control stop start uh you can do everything. You can change the configuration with that. Like you can resync all your Postmix counter, Postmix counters, and yeah, it's pretty amazing. So that was one of our our big goals. And ironically, Brother Rabbit, I think, has been asking for this since probably three years now. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, 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 we'll get there. We get there. We gotta, we gotta get this. We gotta get that. And he's like, yeah, but like. I think the update before this where you could unlock, like say you were already paired and then you needed to, uh, you know, restart your dojo and now your, mm-hmm. your whirlpool's locked. You could unlock it from the UI. That was yes. one that he was like very adamant about for a very long time. And this was, I was like, we're not going to do any middle ground. So was, and Pavel was super excited to to knock out the, the whole thing. So, you know, we still have some more goodies in the in the back pocket for our next release, but it's got everything that you need. The only thing mm-hmm. missing, to be honest, is mixed to XPub, which is yeah. written. I annoy him and you and Pavel often about this. I am looking forward to it, but um, I also respect that one step at a time. And like I say, this this update has made a big difference to my life already. Like I, I had to go in yesterday into the GUI and use that because i had an issue and things to stop and had to restart and whatever else and just having everything in one place in one user interface is a massive leap for me it's like just slicker breaking it down for people who maybe are listening to this and maybe some of the terms are a little bit um i don't know maybe if you're not already using this you'll listen to terminology and be like i don't really know what you're talking about the basics are like if you're running samurai wallet and you're running any other desktop wallet that's linked to any cold storage or anything else say you're running sparrow you can link your sparrow to ronan dojo in i don't know 30 seconds i think it took me not even that and then you want to link it to your samurai wallet and have all your mixing happening continuously 30 seconds and if you want to monitor everything and see all of your mixes going on you can see i'm I'm literally looking at it now I'm looking at my activity, when my last mixes had happened, how many mixes, what's mixing at the moment, the percentage of the mix that's completed, in what pools, everything is in one place. And then for any pairing, it's in one place. And it's just easy. Once you have this thing running, like you don't have to do anything else. Yeah, it's it's honestly just, he knocked it out of the park. I was, I, I got to see like the very, early because i was like oh come on man let me start like teasing it uh so i got to see <laughs> you got to see it and, and even from the early iterations it, he he crushed it man the really cool part that i think it's so it's a low-key it's a low-key thing and, and i'm still trying to opt for some other cool stuff like it but um it, when you go into and you click like the under apps and you click on whirlpool the mm-hmm. actual whirlpool logo spins which i thought was cool <laughs> so what it's what i want one of my feature requests oh i just did it now that's nice i want to see it spin every time that i i get a mix done so when it gets to 100 
it spins or it gets some sort of like confetti pop off or what i don't know just something fun. <laughs> um, i don't know if, if they'll do it but <laughs> it's uh it, i just think it, like those little things you know the it's, yeah, yeah it's all the little details that is amazing and um you know it's awesome and i i said this in our telegram group what i told people is that you know i set out probably shortly after end of october i, I was like i'm gonna make it so people don't have to use I like Sparrow, but I'm going to make it so people don't have to, right? A lot mm-hmm. of people, a lot of our users use it so that they can mix to XPUB or they can yep. they can use, you know, hardware wallets and stuff like that. But unless you're using your hardware wallets by connecting them into the interface, I want to make it so you don't have to do that. I want to make it so mm-hmm. that between Ronin, Samurai, and Sentinel, you can do it all. And so that's, yes. that's kind of where I'm at. You're very close. We are. We are really close. And then, you know, once people realize that they can have a full set stack ready to go between basically three applications, I mean, that doesn't get much easier. Because who wants to who wants to manage other than Max Tannehill? Who wants to manage like 64 <laughs> different apps? You know? um, <laughs> other than Max Tannehill. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree, though. Huge respect for Craig Raw. Fucking love the guy. And what he's built is incredible. Of course. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Builder. But the fact is, and I said this, I think on the last podcast was I have this dedicated Linux only laptop that I use only for Bitcoin stuff. And it keeps dwindling down. It's like less and less things that I need to use it for. And so now it is just running Sparrow and that's it. Like I have no other need for anything else. I feel like, you know, when I'm running Sparrow and when I'm into, especially when I'm interacting with hardware and I'm scanning back and forth and I'm signing PSBTs and QR codes and stuff, the difference between signing a PSBT with this laptop, which has a like a bit of a shitty uh, webcam, but it's a fucking pain in the ass to use. It's like really annoying. Whereas if I'm using Sentinel and I'm using that on an old Pixel, it's like one second mm-hmm. to scan back and forth. It's instant compared to using the laptop that honestly can take like 10 minutes. It's a fucking nightmare. It's like, I hate I don't think using people it. Realize, people realize how hard it is when you have to use like a camera that's facing you to, to try oh, to, like horrendous. to try to, to try to capture. <laughs> it's, it's, you look I pissed because so you're going left and it's going right and you're trying to tilt the screen and then you're turning off the lights in the room and dimming the brightness and fucking around. and Literally every uh, time. I, I cannot figure it out for life, man. <laughs> I feel so dumb. I, will, I would rather like send the payloads like, via PGP, which I hate doing. I would rather do it that way than try to do that. I feel so stupid. It's a very humbling yeah. moment for me. It is. But that's the thing. It's like, you know, you compare that to the simplicity of using Sentinel and it's like, whoa, okay, now this is really slick. So I feel a bit shadowy and cool when I have my Linux laptop and it's all blacked out and it's cool and separate and whatever. But it's like we're one step away from that being sold. That can fuck off. And I'm literally doing everything from two phones running graphene and a hardware wallet and like that is it and obviously my node running and the experience for me is so much more enjoyable and fast and actually as we've discussed on the last conversation like secure as well so all these steps like to someone listening they might think oh you know it's not that different i can access it from a mobile yeah okay you know i can run sensor it's just this watch only wallet it's not that different it's like no trust me if you start using this stuff on a daily basis it's very different it makes a big difference to your life it's one of the things that i try to let people you know make their own i I don't like the idea of being a thought leader or anything like that people should use what they want and not give a fuck about what anybody else really tells them to we can Mm -hmm. give you advice we can give you our opinion and everything else but otherwise use what tools best fit for you based on the research that you do right like you know, there's a yeah. whole stat on pixel phones and and all that fun stuff. But it's ultimately, fuck it. Just do what you want. Do what you need to. You know, we laid out 
why the why behind doing what we think is best, right? So using a mm-hmm. dedicated a dedicated hardware to be your node, right? Try to consolidate services if you can, right? Like Sparrow versus whatever, or having you know four different hardware wallets if you don't necessarily mm-hmm. need them and all that kind of stuff. Like do what makes sense for you, and really like that's what it's all about. Freedom movement. Yeah, and. You know, if you're trying to take privacy seriously, like ask questions, get in there, like don't be afraid. I have plenty of people that hit me up and ask, what's the best steps to buying no KYC or Mm. what are things that I need to consider when I'm doing that? And any of those things are great questions. And that's, it, it gets me excited because it's telling me that people are starting to wake up. People are starting to understand what this movement is going to be like in the future. Like it's before privacy felt like, Privacy in Bitcoin seemed to be a an afterthought, right? So many people wanted to just, you know, get rich quick and yep. and have all that fun stuff. And all those people are turning around and starting to be thinking, oh, well, if I have a lot of money, uh, I'm going to be a target soon, right? So yep. you might want to start taking your <laughs> privacy seriously, right? It's funny how it comes full circle back to privacy. You have people who don't have a lot but they know privacy is important because they live in countries where privacy is attacked all the time. And then you have people that are blissful, didn't think about it. I just want to get rich quick and got sold on the, uh, on the idea of store value and, you know, number go up. Yep. All roads lead back to privacy. All roads lead back to transactions and using the money. Because otherwise, what are we doing? Right? Well, here's the thing. So everyone wants to get rich, right? Mm -hmm. No problem with that. Think about the five richest people you know and hold those people in your mind. How much do they care about their privacy? How many lawyers do they have and shell companies do they have? And how many steps and measures do they take to keep themselves out of the public eye and secure? Oh, yeah. I mean, even if it's not people you know directly, and that's kind of what you mean, ultra-wealthy people, the irony is that those people for sure you'll never hear about, you know, mm-hmm. it, like unless yeah. that they are Elon Musk or someone, and you know, CEO of major corporations, other than that, you know, and even those guys take steps that they're not going to tell you about. Yeah. Not very many people are giving up their secrets on how to be private. It just doesn't happen. Well, that's why these conversations are important. Yeah. Like this is the one place where you can, you're getting to actually hear what to do. Like you're getting advice from people and there's even more stuff that, yeah, sometimes there are things that you don't want to say online mm-hmm. that sometimes meeting people in person or, you know, meeting at an event and then you get to talk to people about these privacy techniques. And that's why it's important to like actually go and talk to people and actually ask questions, right? Like the community yeah. wants to help each other. It's just a matter of what do you stand for? I think that's, that's one thing that... <laughs> people might not like samurai wallet or me for because we push back pretty hard on people but we're very we're principled people that care about what we care about we're willing to do whatever it takes and take whatever risks necessary to bring the privacy tools to the people i don't think people have a problem with that people maybe make some noise about it but when all said and done if they understand what's being done i say between me and you but this is between me you and the listeners i have often people reach out to me and go oh, fucking hell, you know, I really like what uh, Samurai or Run and Dojo are doing, but, you know, they've, they've said this and this is mean or I don't agree with this or I don't agree with that or whatever. And I'm like, listen, when you build a project and you put out software which is risking your own freedom to allow other people to be free, come back and talk to me. And until then, I don't give a fuck there are very few people in this world who are prepared to put their life on the line. And it is literally that, like putting your life on the line to allow other people to be free. And I've said this many times, like genuinely, even if you or Samurai or the whole fucking crew want to come out and said to me, do you know what, Max, we think you're a bit of a cunt. And like everything that I love, you know, like your dog is shit. He's a bit fat. We don't like you. I go, okay, I still respect you because you're putting your freedom on the line. You might be a bit straight down the line with your views and maybe you don't pull punches, but until someone else... No, you're good. Keep going. Until someone else puts their freedom on the line, 
you don't have an opinion that matters. I'm sure there's noise in the background. That sounds exactly like my vacuum cleaner. That's exactly what it is. Yep. Yeah. Is that a Dyson? <laughs> Probably. I don't Probably. want to dox you, but is that a Dyson? Okay, there we go. Um, probably. It's not <laughs> I'm, I would know. God damn it. I thought I was doing. Okay. Um, I'm trying not to like rage right now, but if you can hear me, I'll try to do this. That's um, fine. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Privacy is about principled people standing up for doing what they need to. Privacy is not something loved by the state and by other people. That's what they use to control people. So just like Cody Wilson and that the Death Athletic documentary, you know, mm -hmm. releasing just information for people to build guns, not even building guns, because it's a, a form of control. You're going against that narrative. You are already at risk. So we cannot and we do not. We don't work with people that don't understand that, that don't understand that, like trying to scare people or trying to to push a, a certain narrative is not going to fly with us. We don't work with the fence sitting people. One of the things that I, I've always loved about you is just how you how straightforward you are. I mean, you're like me, like I'm good looking at that too. I'm deaf. Well, if you met me, you would know I'm definitely not not good looking. If you met me, you'd know that I am. I'm oh, damn. exceptionally good looking human being. <laughs> One day I'll, I'll have to confirm with other people who have met you <laughs> or uh, deny <laughs> <laughs> don't trust don't trust i gotta verify um yeah i'll rate you one at a time but <laughs> but yeah no I, I i tend to want to give people the benefit of the doubt but I, i'm learning faster and faster that some people like to go on a hype train and and then when it's time is tough or you know like implementing whirlpool always sounds nice right like if you're Everyone, I think it's like gotten to the point where everyone like knows that that's pretty much everyone knows like that's the way to go if you're going to mix. Mm -hmm. So you're a software developer, you see other people putting it in. Yeah, that sounds great. And then, you know, push comes to shove, you know, the a pro proposed law comes up and all of a sudden we drop everything. It's, um, it, it's, it's just one of those things where, you know, people should, people need to recognize what their wallet is like. We see it, we know, but recognize that it's easy to slide on the hype train. It's, it's a whole nother thing to, to back up what you're saying and be willing to take that risk. Taking those risks is not something small by any means. It's not a joke. That's why I say there is an unlimited pass, even if Samurai or you slag off my dog, which anyone else will get fucking knifed for. <laughs> there is an unlimited pass because I respect it. As much as I care about freedom and sovereignty and everything else, like, I don't know if I'm as tough as that. What you guys are doing is admirable. It is scary. No one else is doing it. No one else has stepped up to the plate. A lot of people talk. A lot of people squawk. A lot of people virtue signal. But there's not many people who are prepared to risk their freedom and to do everything that is possible to make other people as free as possible. And so respect to what you're doing, respect to what Samurai are doing. And I'd like to see more people join the ranks. I'd like to see it happen more and more. But I've been in this space not as long as many people, but it's been a while. I've not seen anybody else do it mm -hmm. and stick to it. And so. You know, it's a, it's a big reason why I push people into this stack as much as I do. It's a big reason why I use it as much as I do is because I'm like, fuck, these people aren't messing around. And um, it's one of the only projects that gives me like real hope where I'm like, okay, like if I'm going to stand toe to toe with governments and I'm going to speak truth and just fucking say it how it is, like, okay, there's a few people who are doing the same. That's cool. Exactly. And, you know, I, I will say this about the growing community. I love that, you know, I, I think in the beginning, I got really frustrated. I just love how we grew, right? Because in the beginning, I, I remember feeling frustrated. I remember, you know, seeing Minode or Umbrel get all this love and all this stuff. And 
I remember being so angry and just being, you know, like it, it motivated me, but I was just, well, I was like, well, I just want to be there. Like, I just want us to be pulling all these fucking people, you know, like I want, I want to fucking crush my competition. You know, I'm just competitive like that. But our, our like user base grew so organically, so naturally in the right way. And it's continuing to grow that way. It feels so much more organic and natural. And those are the users that I want. I don't want, I don't want people that, that aren't ready. And I say that they're not ready, you know, that aren't joining us for the right reason, you know, and they're joining it because some, you know, other, other than you, Max, but some podcaster or whatever, you know, was telling them to get it. You know, I don't, I'm, I don't care. I want them to, to come to the conclusion to like, oh yeah, I found out that this is the best one. Or I was in a telegram group and everyone kept saying to use this, like that word of mouth, that grassroots, that's what I want. And that's why I love your groups. Like your groups are that they are that like community of just mm. regular people, real people who get it. Yeah. They're real people. That's what I want. In the same way that the growth of Samurai and Ronan Dojo, you don't have VC backing, you're not going out and shilling and just trying to grab as many users as possible. What happens is you grab the users who really care and actually want to take things seriously and you keep them. And that's the same as this show has been. It's like, I don't have numbers like Peter McCormack. I don't even have numbers like fucking, uh, what's his name? who we just mentioned earlier, Australian... Oh, Levera. I don't mean that in a negative way. I just forgot his name. <laughs> Levera. Levera, yeah. I don't have numbers like that. But what I do have is I have groups of people who are genuine listeners. They listen to every episode. We communicate. They're building circular economies. They're selling their services and goods for Bitcoin. They're mining at home. They're doing things in the proper way. They're using Lincoin pool. They're using fucking pay names for payouts. They're doing things in the way where I'm like, fuck, you are like my people. This is awesome. And I'd rather have one listener like that than a hundred fucking bullshit, fake cunts. The quality and the quality of users is so important. It makes it so much more enjoyable. When you see such high quality people coming in and those that come in and they're not that high quality and then they're, they're angry or whatever. I'm like, you know, there's been times where I've offered to, yeah, someone was upset and, or whatever. I was like, all right, well, either you try to work with me and we'll fix whatever it is. And I guarantee you'll be happy mm -hmm. after that. If you don't, I'll just buy it back. I don't, I don't want to have this back and forth of, you know, you being upset and yeah. not being there. I was like, that's, you're not a. If that's the case, if this is what this is going to be, then I don't want to have you as a user is yeah. what it is. So, yeah, I'm I think it's amazing. It's so much better. Like I can guarantee you that none of the other podcasters have people have the quality of listeners that you do and just like the quality of like samurai users that are there. So, yeah, like the, it's it's amazing to see it. And that's what I'm excited for. That's what we're excited for. You know, the future and um I, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm super hyped and bullish for 2024. And that's irregardless of price movement. Don't care. But it is nice when the price goes up. That's always cool. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, don't care. I'm, I'm bullish about development in 2024 and 2025. It's going to be amazing. I care. <laughs> Everyone's going to get really fucking upset with me here. Listen, guys, I just uh, sold some Bitcoin peer to peer for cash. <laughs> I know, like, I'm supposed to fucking hold this forever and everything, but I sold it. And oh, guess what? I'm not buying more Bitcoin with it. I'm buying a holiday for my oh. family because I don't get to see them enough. And we're going to go and fucking enjoy it. So I was actually pleased about the price pumping. Isn't it amazing? Like, just that idea of being like, oh, shit, look, I can actually, like, use this. Oh, mate. I'm going to have a lovely holiday. <laughs> it feels so good. Genuinely, I wouldn't have been able to afford it if the price hadn't pumped, not this holiday. And now I'm going to go and have a holiday with my family and it's going to be really nice. And we're going to go away for a week and I'm going to really enjoy it. And I spend some quality time with them. I'm not going to edit and I'm not going to do my fiat mining and we're going to have some sunshine and proper family time. And that to me is what Bitcoin's about. If the price runs, it's great. I don't care about seven generations and fucking all that shit. I just want to make life a bit easier and enjoy it. I, I honestly, since I started spending it, that's exactly how I felt. That's why the price didn't matter to me. And I'm super happy for you. I know that you've been working endlessly for a long time. 
So if anyone deserves it, it's hundred percent you. And yeah, we'll keep working. You know, that's also why we did our pre-sale that we're doing now. So people can still pre-order, pre-order Tontos, two terabyte Tontos. We also have pre-sync options. So people can do that. But part of the reason for pre-orders is so that we can also take a breath for a minute and, um, and get everything together and give our team a little bit of a break over the holidays. So yeah, we're, we're really excited. We're not stopping by any means, but we're going to slow down a little bit just for that. So I'm really happy, man, that you were able to uh, get a vacation for your family. I appreciate that, mate. And um, yeah, it's getting late here. So as everyone knows from the last episode, we're going to carry on this conversation with the spaces. We'll set a date and let everyone know. So anyone who's listening to this, who's thinking, well, maybe I'm still not sure why I want a node. And if I do want a node, why does it want to be a Ronin Dojo node? Does it want to be a Tanto? Do I want to build my own? Whatever it is, you can join us on the spaces. I'll put some information out there. And thank you for joining me, mate. It's always a pleasure. Hey, I always, always love being on here and talking to you, Max, and uh, engaging with your listeners. So thanks for having me. And I look forward to the spaces. It's going to be a good time. Awesome. All right, mate. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, dude. I think that was a really good one. Thanks for listening. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do share it with friends and family. If you have any questions about the new Tanto, you can reach out to me or the team. And if you want a discount on one, you can use the code UNGOVERNABLE or click in the link at the bottom of the show notes. That will give you a discount and help me continue to run this show. I've also put some links in there for anyone who might be interested in the new ungovernable Misfits clothing. We teamed up with Samurai and Ronan Dojo and made a hoodie and t-shirt collection. Check it out at ungovernablemisfits.com and make sure to join us on the 15th at 8 o'clock London time. Look forward to hearing from you.